everyone, David Brennan here from blog2watch.com with a review of the Claude Bernard Sophisticated Classics 83014. So yeah, that, that's a mouthful of a name. So let's begin with um, discussing Claude Bernard, the brand itself, and then we will um, look at the watch in more detail. Claude Bernard uh, is a brand that was established in 1973 in the Swiss Jura Mountains by a watchmaker called well, no other uh, than Claude Bernard. But today, um, the, the, the company is actually owned by a certain Victor Strambini, who also owns Adox watches. Uh, therefore, Claude Bernard is more or less a sister company of Adox or Edox watches. What Claude Bernard does is that they offer more, more accessible, more affordable timepieces in the 150 to about 800 US dollar price segment. Some of the watches, of course, uh, especially the lower price ones, run on quartz movements, but this one uh, that we have here is a sophisticated classics that they like to call it, and it, as you can see, runs on an automatic movement. So yeah, we actually reached out to Claude Bernard to ask whether or not they had any other name for this watch, but no, this particular watch right here is called the 83014, which I found to be quite an amusing name for a, for a dress watch. Um, the collection it resides in is actually called the Sophisticated Classics, but this particular watch is the again the 83014. So yeah, Claude Bernard uh, offers Swiss made timepieces, but many people don't really know what exactly is Swiss made and how it's regulated. So just a few words about that. Uh, there's a Swiss law that regulates um, whether or not a, a, a timepiece can be uh, can, uh, can can be marked as Swiss made, and that regulation says that over 60% of the cost of the watch has to be realized in Switzerland. In other words. Uh, yeah, the manufacturing cost has to be has to come over sixty percent of the manufacturing cost has to be um, realized in a, in Switzerland. And what many of, of the brands do, especially in this more affordable price segment, is that they use a Swiss movement and then uh, source other components such as the case, the bracelet, the dial, and the hands or any comp com uh, combination um, of these parts, uh, and they. Um, Get these parts from um, from non-Swiss suppliers is what the um, the diplomatic way of saying it is. But what most of the time uh, this means is that these components are are coming from um, Asia. However, um, I've seen this because I I've been to to Hong Kong just a few weeks ago, uh, visiting the Hong Kong Watch and Clock Fair with over 750 exhibitors and I, I could see many many suppliers and one of the more interesting things that I experienced there is the level of quality that these um, Asian suppliers are able to achieve these days. So if there's a company that's willing to go and find high quality suppliers the product that they will be able to deliver is also going to be of very high quality. So. It's becoming more and more difficult to tell whether uh, the hands, the dials, the bracelets are coming from Switzerland or in fact from Asia. Of course, there's a lot of inferior quality items still being made in Asia, but the point I'm, I'm trying to make here is that oftentimes you end up with a really high quality product despite the fact that some of the components of it are actually uh, uh, manufactured by, um, by Asian suppliers. The movement inside the Claude Bernard 83014 is a Salita SW200, or to be specific, it's the SW240 because it has the uh, indication for the day and the date as well. Basically, the SW200 um, caliber is a clone, there's no other way around it, it's a clone of the ETA 2824 movement. So, a few years ago, when ETA decided that they wanted uh, to um, significantly decrease the amount of um, of supplied movements um, to non swatch group companies. There, there of course suddenly became a, um, a great shortage of of movements uh, at movements, and uh, Salita is actually one of the the very highest quality, um, let us say, alternatives. 
So yeah, the SW two hundred is an alternative to the to the twenty eight twenty four. And if you if you were to look at the two movements um, side by side on case, you could see that the movements are remarkably similar. Basically, what you can do is if you have a, a watch with a twenty eight twenty four movement, you should be able to or with little to no modifications just swap the movement and replace it with a, with an SW two hundred. There are some technicalities here that I'm not going to go into much detail, but what you need to know for now is that the SW200 is a very high quality movement. It's robust, it's, it's reliable, it's as much of a workhorse movement as the 2824 is. Um, so it also goes to um, offer four different levels uh, of qu uh, quality levels of movements, just like ETA does. So SETA so offers standard movement which is the most basic version and then there's the elaborate then there's the top quality and finally the top quality movement with a cost certificate so this is the four large uh how do you say well we should say that uh quality uh segments of, of movements offered by eta and also by Celita. of course watch brands never uh, really <laughs> communicate the quality of the movement that is uh, found inside um, a watch. I'm guessing that what we are looking at here is uh, probably the standard version with um, with uh, with the custom Claude Bernard um, rotor on there. Nevertheless, I was I was really pleased with the with the timekeeping accuracy. This particle example just gained about four seconds a day, which I think is is perfectly acceptable and is actually within cost. Uh, Cosca um, certificate, um, um, yeah, requirements. So yeah, that that's that's pretty cool, and uh, yeah, of course it's not really an eye candy of a movement, but in this price segment, it's it's um it's perfectly fine. Um, the watch itself is forty two millimeters wide, which is quite wide, and many people are saying that a dress watch should never be um, over thirty eight millimeters wide or thirty six or whatever. But I, I'm not, I don't really agree because of course not everyone has the same size wrist and people um, with larger wrists would look uh, kind of ridiculous wearing a 36 millimeter wide watch it's just so petite so small that uh, they would they would need to look for something else and what this particular watch from Claude Bernard is it's an affordable uh, more affordable and uh, larger sized dress watch and of course I think there's a, there's a there's a there's a healthy market for that so yeah, it, it actually wears larger than 42, thanks to the to the really slim um, at the bezel and the skinny um, lug structures. So I will just put it on real quick so that you can see how it wears on my on my quite small wrists. So yeah, of course, <laughs> there's no no surprise there. Uh, the 42 millimeter wide watch wears quite big thanks to the white dial and again the the uh, the slim bezel. It's just probably the largest watch that I could uh, uh, that I could possibly pull off wearing. And honestly, um, on on my smaller wrist, I think this doesn't look good. This really is a bit too big of a dress watch for someone with the size of uh, of, um, of of um, of a wrist like mine, which is six point seven five inches. I would need to go with something around 40 millimeters or maybe 38 but that's because I have small wrists it's not like everyone has to wear a 38 millimeter wide um, dress watch as you can see legibility is quite good uh, the hands fall a little bit short they don't quite reach the tracks they are supposed to like the minute hands fall short of the of the minute track and the hour hand falls short of the hour track and that's that's quite annoying because it looks like as though they picked the hands from a smaller um, smaller version um, on the other hand, of course, uh, contrast is quite good. Um, the, the indices are, are um, large and easy to read, and yeah, it's it's just it's just a handsome watch. I just wish the wish the um, the hands were a little bit bigger. Of course, there's no loom, so uh, low light uh, legibility is is highly compromised. But uh, otherwise, um, yeah, it's it's just a, it's just a handsome watch. So. Yeah, there you have it. This was a review of the Claude Bernard Sophisticated Classics um, 83014 with the price of about 785 US dollars. And you can see the full review on the blog to watch.com. So, thanks.